Now we've established what the shells are made up from, we're going to look at the order in which the electrons actually go in. So this diagram shows us the, the relative energy of all of those subshells. So you can see the, the very lowest energy is the 1s subshell, followed by 2s, followed by 2p, and then we go to 3s, 3p, and then this is what catches everybody out. If you look, it's actually the 4s sublevel that's actually lower in energy than 3d. So we've got to be really careful when we get up to there. Okay? And the last subshell that we need to worry about is the 4p because at A level all we need to know is for the first 36 electrons, the first 36 atoms. Okay? So there's the, everything in that one slide. So we'll start with hydrogen with its one electron. Now electrons would occupy the lowest subshells first and then go on to the next energy subshell and so on. So the first electron will obviously go into that 1s subshell because that's the lowest in energy. Now diagrams like this are known as electrons in box diagrams and the electrons are represented as arrows so all we would do is draw an arrow in the 1s subshell and that's it. How would you write that as an electronic configuration? Well at GCSE you would just write 1 whereas at A level you would write 1s1. So that's hydrogen's A level electronic configuration. So if we move on to helium now with two electrons we can put two electrons into the 1s subshell so that's where they're going to go but if you look at the arrows, you'll notice that the second one is in the opposite direction to the first one. And this shows the property that we talked about in the previous video of spin. Remember, electrons occupy orbitals, but they must have opposite spins. How would we write that? GCSE would be just a 2, at A level it's 1s2. We'll move on to lithium now, with three electrons. So the first two are going to go into the 1s subshell. There they are with their opposite spins. We've got another electron now. Where will that go? Well, it's going to go in the next available subshell. And so it's going to go into 2s. We're just putting up arrow in there. And that's lithium's done. How would we write that? 1s2, 2s1. going to jump up to carbon now. So this is going to exhibit a very important rule here that we have to apply. It's called Hund's rule. So six electrons, well we know that we can put two in the 1s subshell, so let's put them in. We've got four left, so let's put the next two in the 2s. And we've got two more to go. Now they're obviously going to go in 2p. There's the first one in, but how are we going to put the second one in? Well, we've got a few choices here, and it's actually like this. So it has to go in into a separate orbital unpaired, rather than paired up with that first electron there. How would we write that? That would be written as 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So we're going to finish off with sodium. This is where we started the whole thing from. Remember we started with the GCSE electronic configuration of sodium as 281 and I showed you the A level equivalent. Uh, hopefully it makes sense. So we'll put those 11 electrons in, shall we? So the first two obviously go into the 1s subshell. That's full, so let's move up to the next subshell, 2s. In they go, so we've, we've put four in so far. We've got the 2p subshell to fill up now. So there they go, and I'm deliberately putting them in like that to show you Hun's rule in action. So half fill, and then go back and pair up. 
so we can put six in there so we've got how many left we've got one electron left because there's ten in at the moment where will that go well it's just going to go in the next available subshell and so it goes into the 3s subshell so we write that as 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s1